Today we're gonna make steak pizzaiola the easy way and the better way. Here are the ingredients. Let's get into it right now. So steak pizzaiola, it's one dish that I'm very familiar with. I had it all the time growing up. Everybody's got a different idea of this dish. Most of the things you're seeing online are the wrong idea of it. It's fancy restaurants doing dry aged beef, $120. They'll do it for two. You can do it that way. But honestly, the beauty of this, this dish is to take a tough cut of beef like this right here, which is chuck. So these are chuck steaks. When you buy chuck roast, it's fairly thick and you cut into chunks for your stew. This is cut on the bandsaw, thin like this. You can see there's a good amount of fat on them. It's gonna make it very rich as it cooks. So like we're braising this for a long period of time. If you can't find this, you can use other types of beef. I have three pounds of this chuck steaks, okay? We're gonna pound them out a little flatter, get them a little thin so they don't take forever to braise. I have a ton of garlic here. This is probably the most garlic I've ever used in any dish on this channel. I probably have like 15 cloves and I just chopped it up. We're making pizzaiola, which means pizza maker's sauce. So pizza, sauce, garlic, and then of course it wouldn't be pizza sauce without oregano. And this is Sicilian oregano, which is beautiful. Wonderful flavor, but you could just use regular oregano. In addition to that, we have one bell pepper that I just sliced, and that's just giving a little bit more to this. You can make this dish just with tomatoes. And then in addition to that bell pepper, eight ounces of cremini mushrooms that I just sliced. For the liquid, I have a half a cup of beef stock. So I'm just using beef base here, but you have, by all means, use your homemade stock. I have a half a cup of white wine. It's gonna give it a little zip, I guess, like a little zing. That's, that's what wine does. And then I have 28 ounces of plum tomatoes that I just hand crushed. These are San Marzano, but feel free to use any type of brand you like. Often this dish, especially at home, people will serve this with pasta. So if you want pasta, use another can of tomatoes. That's all you have to do. You don't have to increase your stock or your wine, or you know, if you want more mushrooms, peppers, go for it. But just add another can of tomatoes if you want to make this delicious steak dish that is not expensive. These were only $6.99 a pound. So I have three pounds of them here. Okay, it's $21. This is an inexpensive meal compared to what it would be in a restaurant. Let's get into pounding this beef and searing it right now. So listen, in the print recipe, I used four steaks because those steaks were only three quarter of a pound. These are fairly big. These are about a pound, even a little bit more than a pound each. You're seeing a lot of fat here. Can you remove this now? You can try to cut it out. We're gonna degrease the sauce when we finish. You're not really gonna keep these steaks as is anyway. After two hours of braising, they're gonna be close to falling apart. All I'm gonna do is just hit it right here here with the tenderizing part, but we don't need to tenderize it because when you cook chuck for a long period of time, it will get super tender. The biggest concern you're gonna have is if you can fit these in your pan, because they're big. So if you need to, feel free to cut them. And this is enough for six people. You could cut them in half and have six pieces. So, you know, you can flip them over and do that again, but I want them to be roughly about, recipe says half inch. These are not gonna be half inch. These are about three quarter, but it's all right. We'll put these off to the side. We'll just, we'll salt and pepper them right before we sear it. So let's get our pan hot right now. Okay, I have a 14 inch pan. This is gonna allow me to fit those three big steaks. Probably at the same time, we'll be able to sear them. Don't worry if you don't have a 14 inch pan, you can use a smaller pan, just do your steaks in batches. They can be stacked when they're braising after. We're gonna let it heat up for about three minutes. Whenever you use stainless steel, you need to let it heat up or everything will stick. And while that's heating up, let's just season our steaks so that's why I didn't season them before, because if you put a lot of salt on them, a lot of water will start wicking to the top. And I'm gonna dry off the steaks even more. I forgot to mention before, you can trim up your steaks the outside. Like, you see this right here? Like that, you can just remove that. A piece like this you can remove, which this is just gonna liquefy. Okay, I'm gonna salt and pepper these up. If you wanna go by a general rule of thumb, three quarter teaspoon, a teaspoon per pound of beef. I wouldn't put quite that much on though, because you know, between everything else that's going in here. push it down to lock it in, and then just do the other side. Okay, so our pan's been heating up longer than three minutes, so you can check with a little water. If you start getting little balls that start dancing, you're good. If it evaporated really quickly, then it's too hot. You don't need to get this ton of color on this. You're braising it for two hours. So if you don't want to pick up your pan and start going all the way around, just go like this and just get all that oil on it. Ooh, smoking, but it'll go down once we go. I don't know, it's gonna be a tight fit here. Yeah, it's not ideal. I probably should do two batches. So we're just gonna let them get brown about four, three, four minutes, maybe five, flip them over. All right, that's been about three minutes. 
Okay, and then that's the color we're getting there, which is pretty good. They shrunk, so now you'll be able to fit them easier. What happens is when they hit the other side with the salt, pepper, a lot of water will start coming out, but they're, they're good enough. Okay, like there, it's that. All right, it's not bad. Just put these off to the side. If you made your heat too high and you burned the heck out of your pan, you can't use your four letter word or you will ruin everything. This is a principle that escapes a lot of people. And that burnt stuff is not good. Your sauce will be ruined. Everything that you're working for will be ruined, but we're good here. We need olive oil in the pan though. We don't have enough oil in here. And if you feel like you're burning a little bit, just knock off the heat, just a touch, add a touch of water, it'll be fine, it'll evaporate. And so this is all right right now, all right? It's fine. If it was like completely black and to a point where you're gonna ruin your pan, you would want to have a new pan. And then you just continue on with your recipe. We're gonna let these keep going. They're gonna start releasing some of their water. That's what happens. Mushrooms will release their water and then they'll start to brown more. So you can see the water's starting to release from them. So even just the water from the mushrooms will be able to remove everything from the bottom of the pan. But we're gonna deglaze it in a second anyway. I want them to keep going though a little bit more. Even though they're gonna have a two hour braise, a little bit more. That's enough. Okay, most of the water has come out. See now the mushrooms are nice and brown. You can season these up just a touch, touch of salt. Let's uh, put our garlic in. A little bit more oil. And we'll let this go for a couple minutes until we get some color on the garlic. If you want hot red pepper, and I definitely do, I'm gonna put in about a half a teaspoon. Recipe calls for a quarter. Use what you feel like. All right, this is a good base. If you want onions, you can also use onions. A lot of people will put onions in there. I just have a half a cup of dry white wine. You could definitely use more than this. Normally I do. Keep your head back when you do it. And now with your flat edge of your wooden spoon, just remove all of the brown bits. That's all we're doing here. It's gonna take just a second to do this. You don't have to cook this long. Turn the heat up to high for maybe 45 seconds to burn off that alcohol. See how when I do this, it's like completely clean, the pan? Oh, actually the recipe, I did add both of them at the same time. See, there you go. Back off that heat a little bit. I'm gonna put those tomatoes in. This is one 28 ounce can of plum tomatoes that I just hand crushed. I have my heat about a six out of 10, which will help it come to a simmer, boil up pretty quickly. Once it does, just we're just gonna lower it. You can taste your sauce now, but you're gonna get a lot of reduction here. You can put a touch of salt, do not put a lot in. It's gonna reduce, it's gonna concentrate, it's gonna get saltier. I recommend you wait. What you can do is, and I'm lowering down to a lower simmer here, maybe a 2.5 out of 10. All right, here's the Sicilian oregano. I'm just gonna do one at a time. They come in like branches like this. It's the flower of the oregano. And I'm gonna put one teaspoon in. I wanna show you, do you see how much juice I have in here? Look at all that juice. Look at that, pour that all in. All right, so I'm just gonna take some of my tomatoes, get them on top there like that. If you make this, you're gonna make one of the best things that you've ever had on this channel. I'm, I am not kidding. Part of the reason why we put in the beef stock and a wine, a little bit more liquid, is because you're gonna cook this for about two hours. Is it gonna be exactly two hours? No, it might be an hour and a half. It might be two hours and 20 minutes. These are fairly thick chuck steaks. At about the 90 minute mark, start checking. We want fork tender without falling apart to mush. Are they gonna all maintain their complete steak shape? Probably not. That's all we're gonna do here. If you start drying out, say like you go past two hours and you don't have a tight fitting lid, add a little bit of water if you start to stick at the bottom of the pan. That's it, it's really as simple as that. Here is my cover, all right? And I am very low here. You can open it up every 30 minutes, spoon a little bit of sauce on top. You can reach in there if you want and you can flip the steaks, but it's really not necessary. Okay, so it's been about 95 minutes, roughly. You can see there's a lot of liquid in here. There's a lot of liquid fat. So like right here, I'm going like this, and look at that. Just not there yet. The ones I cooked the other night were about, they were thinner than this, and they took about two hours. So we're at like that 90, 95 minute mark. We're gonna keep going here. We got plenty of liquid in the pan. If you were drying out too much, you're getting too much evaporation, sides of your pan, say you don't have a lid that fit well, just put a little bit of water in there and mix it through. I flip these over once, they're good. Like this, you could take a little bit of the sauce on top like that. This is all gonna thicken up later. Once we get them tender enough, then we could take our lid off and let it cook for a while if we need to thicken the sauce. But the thing you're gonna have to worry more about is if you evaporate it too quick. That's why I'm saying you might have to put water in it. All right, lid back on. They're done, it took a long time. Let's check for uh, tenderness, all right? So right here, see this? I'm going like this, I can kind of take my fork and almost pull them apart. 
So when I do this right now, I kind of just like ripped a piece of it off. You can see it right here. And then if I try it, it is super tender and delicious. We've had reduction here. It's easier to remove the fat when you take it off the heat. Let's turn it off, let a few minutes go by and fat will start rising. In case you're wondering, can you do this in a Dutch oven in the oven? Yes, and it's honestly, it's easier thing to do. Normally for steaks like this, they won't take as long as these took me. These were big steaks. But if you're dealing with like three quarter pound steaks that are fairly thin, 90 minutes to two hours. These took over two hours. Let's let this come up for a sec. All right, it's about five minutes. We can look at our pan here, see where we see some fat. I can see fat right here, a lot of fat over there. Take your paper towel, take a fork, hold it. You know, this technique, for me, I learned from Jacques Pepin, old videos, I remember him doing this. Now, another way to do it, white bread. Pieces of white bread, it will absorb a lot. So I'm just gonna take a little basil here. All right, so we have the taste tester. Hi, James. Hi. Steak pizza Iola. You just had it the other night. Yeah. You, maybe you need a knife? Nah, see, that's another test. If you can do it with the fork, then it's normally good. Yeah. It's good, Put I like it. Pieces of garlic yeah. there for you. If you keep cooking it longer, it will get even more tender, like to the point where you can make it fall apart. What's the super strong flavor of that I'm tasting? Super strong flavor? Probably just the beef flavor. The sauce is very beefy because the beef cooked in the sauce for two hours. Okay, yeah, it kind of tastes like like a Sunday sauce on yeah. steroids. That garlic will be really good. Nice and soft after two and a half hours of cooking. Mm. Now I boost to the rating. So James, what do you think? So I think the steak pizza Iola deserves an eight and a half. I don't know how you could change this, but like, I feel like it's like the sauce is almost a little too beefy. Too beefy. <laughs> I feel like it like overpowers the, the like tomato taste. You're already having it with beef. You don't need like a beef sauce with it. Well, the beef is cooking in the sauce, but I get what you're saying. I do. You can add tomatoes halfway through, which will give you more of a fresher tomato taste. I think maybe what you can do is like, instead of cooking the beef in the sauce, maybe like cook the sauce separately and then put some like beef flavor in it. Like, maybe. Well, that's how some people like it. So I said in the beginning, you'll have the more expensive way will be a, a very expensive steak and then they'll have the sauce and kind of just mix it in before it's served. Your descriptions are getting better and better. And I can tell your ratings are getting harder and harder. I don't know, we'll have to see in the next video. All right, thank you. <laughs>